Bookworm, by the way, Lang Yuchu is from Pengcheng. His father once served as a prefect and was an honest official. After receiving his salary, he did not buy any land. He loved to buy books and accumulated a house full of money. When I arrived at Yuchu, I was especially crazy. My family was very poor and everything was sold out. I only had my father's collection of books and I couldn't bear to sell any of them. When his father was still alive, he copied encouraging learning and posted it on the right side of Lang Yuju's desk. The jade pillar must be read several times every day, and it is also covered with a layer of white gauze, fearing it will be worn out. Yuju studied not for the purpose of becoming an official, but because he truly believed that there was a thousand bells of millet and a golden house in the book, so he studied hard day and night throughout the four seasons. He was in his twenties, and he didn't know how to get a wife. He was hoping that the faced beauty in the book would come to him. Sometimes relatives and friends come to the house, and he doesn't know how to ask if it's cold or warm. After saying a few words, he started reading aloud as if no one else was watching. The guests were tasteless and left after sitting there for a while. Every time he takes the scientific examination, the scholar always chooses him first to take part, but he always fails. One day, Yuju was reading again. Suddenly a strong wind blew and blew the book away. Yuju hurriedly chased after him, but his feet fell into the ground. Looking down, I saw a pit covered with a layer of rotten grass. After digging deeper, I found out that it was a cellar where ancient people stored grain. The grain inside had rotted into dung. Although the food is inedible, Yuju believes that the saying there are thousands of bells in the book is indeed true. Therefore, study more diligently. Another day, Yuju climbed up the ladder to look for books high on the bookshelf, and was pleasantly surprised when he found a small golden car that was a few feet long among a pile of books. I thought the saying there is a golden house in a book has come true again. I took it out and showed it to others. It turned out to be gold-plated, not real gold. Yuju was frustrated and secretly complained that the ancients had deceived him. A few days later, a man who had passed the examination with his father made some observations on the Taoism. This man believed in Buddhism. Someone persuaded Yuju to dedicate the golden chariot to him as a Buddhist niche. The observer was very happy and gave Yuju 300 tails of silver and two horses. Yuju was overjoyed, thinking that there are many carriages and horses in the book. And there is a house of gold in the book all came true, so he studied harder and harder. When Yuju was in his thirties, someone advised him to marry a wife. Yuju said, there is a beauty like Jade in the book. Am I still worried about not having a beautiful wife? After another two or three years, no beautiful woman came out of the book to find him. And everyone laughed at him. At this time, folk rumors spread that Vega, the star in the sky, had eloped to the earth. Someone joked with Yuju, the weaver girl ran away, probably because of you, right? Yuju knew that they were teasing him and ignored them. One night, I was reading the book of Han until the eighth volume. When I was halfway through, I saw a beauty cut out of yarn sandwiched between the pages of the book. Yuju was shocked and said, there is Yin Ruyu in the book. Is it this one? He felt disappointed in his heart. He took a closer look at the gauze cut beauty. Her eyes and eyebrows were lifelike. And there was a faint line of small words on her back. Weaver girl. Yuju was so surprised that he put the beauty in the book every day and looked at it over and over again, forgetting to sleep and eat. One day, while staring at the gauze beauty, the beauty suddenly bent over, sat on the book and smiled at him. Yuju was so horrified that he quickly prostrated himself under the table. The beauty sat up and became more than a foot tall. Yuju became even more surprised and kotoed repeatedly. The beauty stepped off the table, standing tall and graceful, truly unrivaled in beauty. Yuju asked while bowing, What kind of god are you? The beauty smiled and said, My surname is Yan, my name is Ruyu. You have known me for a long time. Thank you for looking forward to me every day. If I don't come once, I'm afraid it will take a thousand years. After that, no one believed what the ancients said. Yuju was very happy and slept with her. But although they were very affectionate on the pillow mat, Yuju didn't understand the things between men and women. From then on, whenever Yuju read, 
he would always ask the woman to sit aside and accompany him. The woman advised him not to read anymore, but Juju refused to listen. The woman said, the reason why you can't become a successful person is because you only know how to study. Let's see how many of the people who passed the scientific examination studied like you. If you don't listen to me, I will leave. Yuju I had to listen to her for the time being. After a while, I forgot again and read it as before. After a while, I looked for the woman again, but she was gone. Yuju was so distraught that he knelt down and prayed, but there was still no trace. Suddenly he remembered the place where the woman was hiding. So he quickly took the Book of Hun and checked it carefully. And sure enough he found her in the original place. When he couldn't scream, he knelt down and begged. The woman came down and said, If you don't listen anymore, I will never associate with you. So he asked Yuju to buy chessboards and cards and play games with him every day. But Yuju's mind was not on playing at all. Seeing that the woman was not there, he stole the book and quickly browsed a few pages. I'm afraid she found out and left again, secretly mixing the eighth volume of Hanshu she hid in with other books, causing her to lose her way back. One day, Yuju was fascinated by reading again. When a woman came in, he didn't notice it at all. Suddenly he looked up and saw her, and quickly closed the book. The woman had disappeared. Yuju panicked and searched the collection of books but could not find her. Finally, I found it from the eighth volume of Hanshu, and even the number of pages was not bad at all. So Yuju begged again and vowed never to read again. The woman got down from the book and played chess with him. Saying, if you can't play chess well in three days, I'll leave on the third day. The two of them when playing chess, Yuju actually went to pieces, and the woman became happy. He was also given a piano and allowed to play one piece of music within five days. Yuju played the ball in his hand and watched with his eyes, not caring about anything else. As time went by, I became able to play the piano very easily, and I became excited without realizing it. The woman drank and played with him every day, and Yuju was so happy that he forgot to study. The woman asked him to get out of the house and make more friends. From then on, Lang Yuju's reputation for being charming and versatile spread far and wide. The woman said, now you can take the exam. One night, Yuju said to the woman, when a man and a woman live together, they will have children. I have lived with you for such a long time, why don't you have children? The woman smiled and said, you study every day, I originally said it's useless. Now you haven't understood the chapter about the couple. There is Kung Fu on the pillow mat. Yuju asked in surprise, what Kung Fu? The woman just laughed and didn't speak. After a while, she secretly gathered Go up and teach Yuju. Yuju was extremely happy and said, I didn't expect that there is such indescribable happiness between husband and wife. So he said it to everyone he met, which made everyone laugh. When the woman found out, she scolded him, but he still didn't understand and said, Why don't you tell people if you go through the wall and cross the courtyard to steal things? Everyone has the happiness of family. What is there to be taboo about? After eight or nine months, the woman gave birth to a boy, and Yuju hired an old woman to raise the baby. One day, the woman suddenly said to Yuju, I have been with you for two years, and have given birth to a son. We can break up if you delay for a long time, I am afraid it will bring trouble to you. By then it will be too late to regret. Yuju heard this, he said, falling to the ground with tears in his eyes. Don't you miss our child? The woman was also very sad. After a long time, he said, you must ask me to stay, so throw away all these books on the bookshelf. Yuju refused and said, these books are your hometown and my life. How can you say such things? The woman no longer forced and said, I also know that everything is luck, so I have to tell you in advance. Previously, some of Yuju's relatives discovered the woman and they were all horrified. But I didn't hear which girl he married, so I asked him together. Yu Gui would not tell lies, but remain silent, making everyone more suspicious. As a result, the incident spread throughout the country and reached the ears of County Magistrate Chi Mu. She, a native of Fujian, passed the Jinshi examination when he was young. When I heard the news that there was a beauty in Yuju's family, I had bad thoughts and wanted to see what the woman looked like. 
so I immediately sent the Yemen to capture Yuju and the woman. The woman heard about it and fled without a trace. County Magistrate Chi was furious and arrested Yuju and put him in jail. He was stripped of his honorary title and tortured severely, forcing him to reveal the whereabouts of the woman. Yuju was beaten to death, but he still didn't say anything. The county magistrate tortured the maid again, but the maid didn't know much and could only tell a general story. County magistrate she thought the woman was a monster and rode to Yuju's house to capture her in person. Seeing that the house was full of books and there were too many to search, the county magistrate ordered the books to be set on fire. Thick smoke billowed and gathered above the courtyard, lingering like dark clouds for a long time. After Yuju was released, he went to Yuanwan to seek help from a disciple of his father and was able to regain his fame. This year he passed the imperial examination. And the next year he passed the imperial examination. Yuju hated Magistrate Shi so much that he erected a memorial tablet to Yin Ruyu and prayed every day, if you have a spirit, please protect me from becoming an official in Fujian. Later, he was appointed by the imperial court as the inspector and inspected Fujian. Three months later, after investigating the misdeeds of County Magistrate Shi in his hometown, he ransacked his entire family. At that time, Yuju had a cousin who was a judge and forced him to marry a concubine. It was assumed that he bought a maid and lived in Yuju's official office. As soon as the case was settled, Yuju resigned that day and returned to his hometown with his concubine. Alright, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.